Hello, everyone. You're welcome to another edition of In a Nutshell, powered by the Covenant Nation, Manchester. And today I have here with me three lovely people. And um, we will be talking on the topic um, everybody can, I cannot. Is consecration that deep? Okay, so, but before we go on, I'd like us to introduce ourselves and um, one interesting thing about us that people don't know. So, um, do I go first? <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. My name is Joy Salu Esson. I am a music minister and some other things. And one interesting thing about me is that I love to cook. Yes. Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Chingwe. Um, I love maths and everything that has to do with maths. Okay, so hi, everyone. I'm Ifedo Lakbola, I'm UK Wale. Um, One interesting thing about me, I love jollof rice very much. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Um, Erosa, um, Ogbogoda. I'm a pharmacist, which I guess is something that a lot of people do not know. <laughs> yeah, wow. Yeah. Okay, yes, yes, we are going to dive into the topic for today. Everybody can, I cannot. Is consecration that deep? All right, so um, I want to pass it to Ife. Do you have something to talk about? Like something everybody, you know, been doing, but you cannot um, so while thinking through this, um, one of the things that struck me was um, one, some of the experiences, one of the experiences I had when I was much younger, right? Um, I grew up around church. Uh, what I mean around church is um, a church was just about um, three houses away from mine. And so we had that community of believers, young Christians. Of course, there were some of us that did some things that we wondered why. But, you know, in seeing all those things, one of the things that kept me then was I was I just had this silent, maybe unknown consecration to say these are some things that would not cross over into that would not cross over into. So, of course, because we were young, a lot of people, there were a lot of childhood exuberances or teenage exuberances that a lot of people did. But then there was just this silent thing it was almost like God had set you aside even before you knew so much about it that oh, I'm not going to do these things because I feel like there's something different about my life. Um, I remember then my mom used to say that um, you usually have these prayer meetings on Fridays and everybody wasn't. And it was just that silent way that God was consciously pulling us out for himself and then getting into that flow of these are the things that I can't do. Even though every teenager was going this pathway, every young girl was doing this, I wasn't going to do it. And so that is some one thing that, you know, quickly came to mind when I started to think about everybody does it, I don't. Mm. And so, yeah. All right, thank you. That's interesting. I am going to quickly share my before I pass, you know, pass it over to um, Erisa. And uh, one of the things that you know came to mind was when I was schooling, you know, back in London. I remember one of the course, you know, the course we we took then was you. We have to go to the pub, you know. You have to go to the pub to experience um, live music in the pub and um, I remember it's not something you can excuse yourself from. It's a must, it's compulsory because you're gonna write an exam for that. So I remember I would go with my classmates and um, a lot of them drink, they all drink, they all smoke. It's crazy, you know? Um, somebody once says in this UK, I think we're all smoking together because, you know, the cigarettes, you know, and the smoke that comes out of everything just, you know, goes into your, your you know, you and all of that. So I remember we all go there and they will get their drinks, smoking in front of me. We're all sitting, you know, together and um, they're drinking. I'm drinking water. And everybody just looking at me like, are you crazy or something? How are you not partaking? We're all drinking, smoking, having fun, and you're just sitting, sipping your water. And I'm like, yeah, I don't drink. I don't 
smoke because of my fate. You know, it wouldn't allow me to do that. And subsequently, we would go, you know, and I remember one of my classmates, you know, she would say like, she called me aside one time. I'm like, how do you do it? I'm really, really so amazed. Like, I've never really met anyone this willed power. You know, it's like you're not influenced, you know, because there are times you will sit with people, you know, just because you don't want to be seen as, you know, something else different mm -hmm. or called a different name or something mm -hmm. you're influenced are like oh let me just let me just do it because we are good. here you yeah. understand and she was like i really i've never really met anybody that stood out i really want to learn I, i've been really trying to stop to smoke and i would really want to learn how are you doing it and because of that act i remember she started going she's a white girl she's from barcelona she started going to church with me Every morning, she would ask me to send her a Bible passage. And, you know, she stopped drinking. Wow. It was amazing. So mm -hmm. I, I really believe we can really, you know, stand out and things like that. Dr. Shinwe, what um, I think when it comes to consecration, sometimes it's, if I look at it from a biblical standpoint, I think one of the things, when I, when I heard the topic, others may, but I cannot. I think one of the things that stood out to me was the, I would say semi-popular example of Daniel and his Hebrew friends who decided not to, in a foreign land, partake of the king's meat and his wine, even though they had to do that for three years. And I think I found that quite interesting to be able to have that resilience and standing and strength, even with the temptations, because you would assume that if it's the king's meat, it's properly done, it's seasoned well, it's the best of the best of the cows and the sheep and all of that. And the wine would be the best in the city for a country that's as rich as that would have been as rich as Bab Babylon in those days. So for me, thinking about the topic, that was the first example that came to mind. And I found that quite instructive as an example of mm. others may, me and I can. but I cannot. Um, and sometimes it's not necessarily because it's a sin per se on the surface of it, but it's just something that either God has asked you to lay aside or you have chosen to lay aside for God. Yeah. Over to you. <laughs> Yeah, so for me, when I heard the topic, right, I was trying to think of like an example, maybe like a personal experience. And mm. the first thing that came to mind for me was um, when I just came into the UK, obviously you come into a new environment, you're looking for a new job, you're searching for jobs, and then you begin to ask questions. When you decide on the career paths you want to take, you begin to ask questions like, mm. um, okay, I want to probably go into supply chain. I want to be a business analyst. What do I do? And then you start hearing suggestions of, well, you probably need to update your LinkedIn profile. You need to, I mean, the CV you have from Nigeria is not going to, it's not applicable in the UK. So you need to write all manner of things on LinkedIn. You need to change your CV, probably even create job experiences that don't exist and all that. And I mean, I asked myself, like, is this right? Do I really need to have to lie on my CV or have to lie on my LinkedIn profile just because I want to get a job? Logically looks good. Logically looks like the correct thing to do, especially in our generation where we're more focused on being correct than being Christians. But I asked myself as a Christian, is it going to be right to lie on my LinkedIn profile because that's what it is. Is it going to be right to allow my LinkedIn profile? Is it going to be right to allow my CV or I should keep things the way they are and just trust that, I mean, it's God. It's God that eventually gives the increase. So just trust that staying true, even though it's not popular and trust that God will give me the desired end that I wish. And looking back, I mean, I'm sure I have probably testimonies of mm -hmm. staying true, keeping true to what is true. And then at the end of the day, uh, the rest has been an, it has been an, a smooth ride in the UK. And I think we would, we would come back to staying true, yeah. you know, the benefits of staying true yeah. and being consecrated, you know, consecrated. consecrated. But first of all, I'd like us to, you know, look at the word consecration. You know, what does that mean to, to us? You yeah. Know, 
I put down a definition here, so I'm just going to read it and probably to help us. Um, so it says, um, cons uh, consecration refers to the act of dedicating oneself wholly and entirely to the service and will of God. It involves a deliberate and intentional commitment to live in accordance with God's principles, seeking to align one's life with its purposes. In essence, it's a sacred and intentional, and I like the fact that it's intentional, setting a part of one's life, talents, and resources for God's glory. So it's more like um, it's deliberate, it's intentional, and it's it's a personal responsibility where you decide that um, others may, I cannot, and this is my commitment to my walk with God. Yeah, so that's like a summary of what the definition is. So for me, it's more like, I mean, it's similar to what um, Ife has said, but is in plain terms, it's like a devotion to God, mm. right? I remember growing up um, in church. I grew up in Church of God Mission, right? So mm -hmm. you have a period where they want to maybe ordain ministers or ordain people into ministry. And then in church, they used to call it like a consecration service. So it's like you're setting these guys apart mm. for full devotion mm. to God. So for me, consecration is you are fully devoted to God. And that's why I like what um, Chinwe Chin said earlier when she tried to say others may cannot. Like, you cannot because of your devotion to God. Mm. It could be because of laws that are written in scripture, or like based on like, it could be the Ten Commandments. Mm. It could be something that is specific to just you. So it's the Holy Spirit that has said that for you, you need to maintain mm. This part. So oh. it's it might even be okay for other believers to do, but for you, because you mm -hmm. know between you and the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, you have a specific instruction yeah. and so you have to stay true to it. So for me, consecration is basically being devoted to God as yeah. the Holy Spirit leads you. I, I will also say that consecration um has to do also has to do with your purpose and mm -hmm. calling. Yeah. You know, and there's something here that I put, you know, wrote down. Say the weight of God's calling on a person will determine how much a consecrated life, you know, they would lead. So, um, for instance, I think we talked about um, is that John the Baptist now, you know, because of the setting, a certain call on your life, you know, you would have to abstain from certain things, consecrate, you know, yourself, devote yourself, dedicate or separate mm -hmm. yourself onto that because of it. Because I, I, I'll give an instance. I remember some time, you know, some years ago, I, I've never, you know, I used to hear people say they, they fasted for three, you know, three days dry fast, you know, without water. And I'm like, I, I'm, of course, I used to fast, but just the six to six thing, you know, I, I was praying, you know, I started praying like, God, I really want to, I really want to find that strength, you know, to fast for three days, you know, and then, you know, uh, it's all like, okay, why do you want to, hmm. you understand? Because others are doing it. Not because I've asked you to do it for mm. a certain purpose. Why do you want to do it? You know, so I started thinking about it, started thinking. About, and then I read a scripture. It's, I mean, years ago, years, many years, I was still very young, probably, you know, my youth or teenage, very long time, you know. So I started praying like, okay, like, okay, God, I know there's something you've put inside of me. And then I started praying, okay, God, for this reason, please, I want to be used by you. And then I remember one time I had a dream, you know, like, okay, for you to get to this height, you must do this. You must separate yourself to be doing this. Mm -hmm. Praying, you know, keeping to prayers, studying and all of that. I remember I actually sow a seed for that purpose, you know, because I wanted to fast. And I said, okay, because if I have to attain this height on this calling that means there are certain things i have to do and that includes fasting so i'm like okay god this is the reason why i want to fast because of this purpose mm. and then you know i actually prayed for that fasted for three to fast for three days i fasted 
to fast for three <laughs> days, you know. So, you know, long story short, I I went through that fast and I could remember some of the things God told me mm. years ago. I still have them, you know. And one of the things he said, he said, for you to attend this, you must daily die in my presence. Mm. Mm. That's consecration. Yes, yep. that's it. You must. All that can be doing certain things, of course. You know, they don't have to. So, for instance, I can drink cold water. Not because it's bad, per se, but because if I do, there's a way it affects my voice. Mm. I have friends, singers that drink cold water and they are good. So just looking at that, that's consecration on its own. You are yeah, abstaining from certain things. Wow. You understand? So if you have to attain this particular, you have to die in my presence. You have to do certain things. So I think that's, you know, that's consecration. Yeah, I think it's it's interesting the dimension you brought it about fasting because mm. if if we think about it most churches now now are fasting you know mm. we're at, we're in the process of consecrating That's the right. rest of the year to god by dedicating sometimes some churches in all of january maybe 21 days as we're starting next week on monday for uh, 40 days so it's consecration is something that's happened time and time again and i think when we think about consecration as it goes back in the day you hear things like um when, for example, when Samson was born, he didn't have, he had to not cut his hair. Um, not his mother could not drink strong wine. And that was the same thing that was said. I think someone mentioned John the Baptist yeah. as well. Didn't have to do all of that. Yeah. So there are things like that that we do because it's tied to something that God wants to bring yeah. through yeah. our lives. Not because eating food is bad, but, mm -hmm. but to, as, it, as you said, just kill the flesh before God and allow the power of God to walk through you to produce what he wants to produce in the earth, then there are things in our lives that we have to give up for him. Um, so I think most of us would not be asked to cut our, to grow our hair for lengths of time. I mean, I don't know of anybody that would do that now, but um, most of us can bring up the argument that it's okay to drink alcohol or not. That's, that's, that's you can bring arguments for and against. Uh, most of us would not encounter dead bodies because that was the third thing. If you had to consecrate yourself to God for a particular time, like the Levites did in the Old Testament, they were not allowed to be around dead bodies um, in their role as priests unto God. But this dimension of fasting, I think turning down our place, like a prophet once said, is, is where most of us would, would, behave or act in in our process of consecrating times and things and our lives to god very likely that would come up in when we bring ourselves to do these fast things whether it's three days 40 days whatever as the spirit of god leads us yeah yeah but uh, uh have we you know as individual you know had experiences where god had you know asked you to you know set aside certain things or dedicate certain things or yourself for a period of time okay i'm calling you to something and i want you to abstain or you know separate yourself have we had experiences like that in our lives yeah i, I think um so for me i've had quite a number but um while i was also preparing for this one of the uh, other thoughts that came strong was um there was a season in my life that um i was waking up 3 a.m every day to pray and um it was it lasted for a while right and of course i had an alarm at some point and then later my body clock adjusted and i could just i was just going to get out of bed to pray now it was a personal thing yeah so that it didn't mean that my husband had to wake up to pray or i had to wake yeah. up the kids to pray because we are all on individual journeys but then at that point it was a personal devotion and a personal commitment and a personal responsibility because um, the response to God's call to us is our responsibility to say, is our taking up that responsibility to say, I'm going to commit myself to doing this and I'm going to um, devote the time to it, the energy and all of that. And, you know, that season, I so it was like a back-to-back -back thing. So I was going to wake up 3 a.m., probably stay in prayers with the word till about 5 5 30 ish i was out for my morning walk running jogging walking and then back at about past six and it was for me and it and it was a personal journey and it was 
in those moments that God had established a lot of things in my mm-hmm. heart and even on the other side, you know, I remember coming back from works and I'm sharing my husband, oh, um, the Lord just said this. I said, yeah, you've gone to work today. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but, but it was personal. Yeah. And it was also in response to a call to something different. So at some point I was, so at some point, one of the first confessions I used to do, confessions I used to do as I was walking out of the house for my morning walks at that 5, 5, it was dark in Lagos, Nigeria. Like, nobody wants to go out at that time. The first thing I used to say was, if a bodily exercise profits little, we're exercising this profit onto this body today. But it was a personal thing. And I wasn't going to push that on any other person to say, yeah, oh yeah, let's go to yeah. do this today. You have to do this. Mm-hmm. No, but that was it. Even that prayer call, it was, so at some point I had to turn off my alarm because it was going to affect every other person. And then, like I said, my body adjusted, but then it was personal. It was what the Lord wanted to do, me to do at that time. And I had to commit to it. For other people, it might be, oh, you need to do something. Mm-hmm. So it's that um understanding the personal touch to which God is calling you. And for some, it might not be something that everybody on the other side says, oh, don't dress this way, don't wear this, don't drink this. It might just be that call to separation, call to do something different, call to set aside time. But I think that in whatever it is that the consecration journey is for everyone, there's that commitment to God, I'm going to set aside this to do this with you. I'm going to set aside to even listening to you because it's you might say, oh, like Chiwe said, oh, it's the time for fasting and you're doing it because the church is fasting, but then there's no personal connection. You're not really connecting with God on that level to say, God, I'm devoting the next 20 days to fasting because I want to connect with you. I want to hear from you. I want to study more. I want to now get a blueprint for this year. So it, there has to be that personal touch to it. Can I ask a yeah. question? Picking back in the, um so a couple of questions actually and so i think I, we, yeah sorry before you ask that question so we don't deviate but i really want to add to what she just said like you said it's a personal thing and sometimes you consecrate yourself because you really want to get to know god oh, yeah not because it's like you said it's asking us to or it's called is a command but because you want to know him more you know paul said that i may know you mm-hmm. mm. it's it's a personal journey yeah. mm. just because you want because there are depths in god mm-hmm. really that we haven't seen mm-hmm. you know and jesus said greater things and because sometimes as a person you know as a person you were like okay god I want to get to this depth in you. Mm-hmm. So I'm consecrating myself. I'm setting myself aside. I'm separating myself, you know, just because I want to know who you are. Not necessary because it's commanding us, you mm-hmm. know, to do that. Mm. Okay, so my question was, um, so you said you were waking up at 3 a.m. for a certain number of days. I don't know if you have liberty to share how long that lasted for. If you were working at that point... Um, and how, and how you, <laughs> how you manage your commitment. There's a, there's, there's a reason I'm asking this question and depending on your answers, I might say yeah. one or two things. Okay. So yeah, thank you. Um, so it was, it lasted for a long time. Um, probably two month, years. Two yeah. years. Okay. 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 That's so, a long time. Yeah. Now, yes. Um, well, let me now put the balance to it for people that are wondering, okay, does it mean I have to wake up to pray? I go to bed early. Okay. So that's the balance to it for me. So um, those days uh, you could see me getting into bed at 9 p.m. Because I knew that I had to wake up early. Yeah. So um, so I that's the balance. So I had sufficient sleep. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I had sufficient sleep. Let me say that. <laughs> I had sufficient sleep. Because, if I, you know, one of the jokes we used to have back home was, um, if I just has to sleep once it's dark, like she has to go to bed. <laughs> so I, I had that sufficient sleep. So my body was well rested. Yeah, that's so that's what I was that was that mm-hmm. was driving so, at because yeah. if you're going to sustain that going to yeah. bed at your usual time of maybe mm-hmm. ten or eleven, no, and still waking up at down. three <laughs> and still having yeah. to go to work at six, except mm-hmm. if God supernaturally supplies you with physical strength, strength for that to task. do that for two years Mm. then you were wise in your in how you maintained and took care of your body and saying if i'm going to be able to wake up do this at 3 a.m i would have to go to bed early to make sure that i was still 
sane. Sane. Yeah. <laughs> still strengthened to carry out my, yeah. as it were, secular roles and role yeah. as a wife yeah. and as a mother. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then the balance yeah. also is that at that stage in my life, I ran a business. And so I yeah. had Jeez. people working with me and for me. So I had, I think I used to go to work about nine in the morning. So I had a bit of flexibility mm-hmm. then. So I had a bit of flexibility. Okay. Yeah. But I used, I think I used, to, yeah, I used to go to work about nine if I wasn't working from home. Okay. So I had that flexibility. Mm. But then I think the key part was the fact that I went to bed early. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I went to bed early. So, and and I think that's the thing about, I mean, when you know that um, God requires that level of devotion or consecration from you for the next level that he's taking you to, right? Mm -hmm. So you would obviously need to adjust Mm -hmm. certain certain things things. in your life to fit into, especially when you've gotten to that level in your work with God that you know, I mean, Mm -hmm. like I tell my wife, I know that the... I'm not, I've understood my life pattern. Uh, mm-hmm. The way I get results is devotion to God, mm-hmm. staying, staying true. I've understood that mm-hmm. over the years. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember the first time I noted that was, I read, I mean, it was a secular book. I read The Accidental P- Public Servant by Erufai back then. And then in that book, Erufai wrote that, um, he was talking, I think, about General Obasanjo. And then he mentioned that, oh, for Obasanjo, anything Obasanjo does, Gragra, like forces himself to try to have, he ends up not having it. Mm. And then the things he doesn't fight for, it just comes to him naturally. And then when I read it, what I got from that is that for me, anything I try to use my logic or my common sense to work, Mm. it doesn't work. Mm. But anything I go to God for, Mm -hmm. and then stay true to God for, I get results. So when you know that, and God now gives you an instruction to do something, you know that... I mean, that's more important than any other thing. Yeah, so you yeah. try to adjust your life such mm-hmm. that everything fits into you that. Know, but, 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 you know, that brings me to another angle or side of consecration. You know, based on what Ife just said, you know, going to bed at nine, you know, you are, that means you, what, how do I put this now? That means you have, um, excluded so many things you have Mm. you know closed so many other phases of your life you know like for instance um watching tv doing all of those things because you have to go to bed if there was consecration watching tv is part of it (laughs) (laughs) i'm just saying you know it might not be that expert for you but Gisting with friends, being on social media, you know, at that time, because that's the time you get back from, you want to relax, you know, because throughout the morning, you've been doing other things, right? Mm -hmm. So those are the times you like, okay, let's catch up. Let me, well, you know, we're on mind or you understand, your cash from being with my family, I've been away for a long time. So this is the time to, you know. So just Mm -hmm, relax. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that means consecration. So it just brings into mind can um put you in a lonely place because you are the only one now Mm -hmm. doing that every other person is having fun Mm -hmm. doing going about their business you know watching tv you know gisting with friends being on social media but you at that time you are going to bed (laughs) so it can actually put you on a lonely path. Like you are the only one. It, it feels like you're the only one standing out doing a certain thing, you know, at a certain time while other people are doing it. At those times, you are separated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You understand? So you are left alone. You understand? So it could actually put you, you know, in a lonely place. Yeah, it actually But because does. you know that at the end, the end result. Yeah. You understand? Peace. While everybody... Wound, oh, you me. understand. Oh, that's, oh, that's me. me. Yeah, no, yes. that's you understand. Yeah, but yeah. I, I, and I think we'll also get to that place where we now start seeing the benefits of consecration. 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 It's actually you know. that place of that personal responsibility. You yep. know, when you understand that there is a pull on my life and there's something that needs to be done, then I have to be responsible. You know, discipline is one of the things that yeah. we don't really talk so much about in the faith. But it is a necessity if you have yeah. to stay with God. Um, for a lot of us, you know, my kids used to say stuff. When we, in fact, we say like, mommy doesn't watch TV. Like, that was what I said that I think the TV has gone with the consecration part. <laughs> there was a season in my life that once I got back from work, 
I was turning on the TV. I already had so, those sets of comedies I was going to watch. Mm. But then when the season shifted, yeah, it became, and then it, it became a debate in the house. Do we really need to have TV? Oh yeah, we mm. have kids I want to watch. So it is understanding that personal path that God is putting you on and the requirements for it. Like this fast thing. Now, I know some people that they practically live a fasted life. Yeah, like yeah, every yeah. day. You yeah. hardly find them eating, not because they cannot eat, but because they've said, this is my devotion to God. Yeah. I'm telling him that food cannot take the place of God. Mm -hmm. However, when you ask these people, so how do you balance out your health in it? And then they tell you, oh, I take a lot of things like this at mm. this time just to, you know, replenish my body. So he's understanding that personal journey and knowing, oh, this is what God wants me to do. And this is his thing that he requires and getting into it. And like Joy said, dying daily. And, and that I takes like actually, obedience. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because... Yes definitely <laughs> when that call comes oh yeah your flesh <laughs> your uh, your alarm can ring <laughs> no, no, let's try another clock. day let me just take another five minutes and then mm -hmm. you find that five minutes is 30 minutes you've missed that so it's a call to obedience yeah because you can get that push that nudge and not but good. and not you understand? So yeah. sometimes God is calling us to separate ourselves to prayers. Okay. Mm -hmm. I want you to be praying three hours or two hours or an hour a day. But you, when the time comes, that nudge comes, you can, uh, three hours today. Let me just uh, go. <laughs> <rest. laughs> uh, and then you do other things that will take that time. And you, you will not have one hour left. Oh, let me just quickly, you understand. So it's a call to obedience as well. Dr. Shinwe. Um, I think with the issue of the consecration thing now, if you think about one of the next things that this lovely segues into is what if we ask, since you're like a uh, muse for today. No. <laughs> <laughs> or we might come to your and ask, you, you had an example about um, choosing not to go the way of everybody else mm. and choosing in editing your um, cv okay. and online prof profiles what was the reward what's what can you share i don't know if you are liberty so to share briefly what was the yeah. benefits of having to consecrate that time um or not doing things the way others were doing it you decided that you cannot do it what was the benefit of doing that for example i mean for example i used when i came i applied to a couple of jobs right i want to get into either the clinical research space or get into the supply chain space mm -hmm. in the uk and I mean, getting it, there's nothing like clinical research in Nigeria. What we do in Nigeria is public health. So yeah. if I was going to claim that I've done anything clinical research in Nigeria, it should have been a bloody lie. I mm -hmm. spoke with I spoke with a friend. I asked him to send me CV because like we worked in the same sector in mm -hmm. Nigeria. And mm -hmm. then I saw his CV. I'm like, no way. I can't put this. <laughs> I, wow. I didn't do all these things wow. in Nigeria. But I went ahead to probably make just try as much as i can align reality with what the job description was and then mm -hmm. put in for the interview i got shortlisted mm -hmm. and i got the job yeah. right yeah. even That's without amazing. yeah even yeah. without having to lie even though eventually i didn't do the clinical research job but i picked another role which was mm -hmm. supply chain again when i was doing the interview for supply chain supply chain is something that you need to use what they call the sap erp software right mm -hmm. yeah. All the places I've worked, I've never used it. Mm -hmm. So you talk, I remember my first interview, obviously. The first one, I didn't get it, right? The first supply chain interview I did, I didn't get it. And they asked me whether I've used SAP. I told them no. So I didn't get it. And then you go back and you're like, oh, okay. People will tell you, I've told you. Don't tell anybody that you have not wow. used SAP. You yeah. can you we'll can quickly learn, you can yeah. quickly learn it yeah. and write it. So the next interview, of course, I watched YouTube videos on how to use SAP and then learned how. So the next interview, I told them, I mean, I've not used SAP, right? But I've used another inventory management software in mm -hmm. Nigeria. And mm -hmm. then I have a little bit of knowledge mm -hmm. about SAP. And I believe that, I mean, it's knowledge is transferable. As yeah. long as you understand the core concepts mm -hmm. of supply chain, you can transfer knowledge. That interview was like 30 minutes. <laughs> then after I finished with the supply chain manager, they passed me on to the like the head of supply chain mm -hmm. for UK. And he went, like he drilled all the drilling. But eventually I got that job. Yeah. Right? Sure. I got that job. And um when I got that job, I think they gave me either a three months or a six months contract. You know, it was a six month, it was at the interview, it was a three months contract. But when they sent the offer letter, it was a six months contract. Yeah. 
Yeah. I had not done three months on that job mm. when they offered me a permanent I mean, contract. Wow, right? I had not done yeah. six months. Now, um, 18 months in that same organization, and I've switched roles from mm. the demand and supply chain that I was employed mm. for, and then I'm doing something in product management. So mm. it's, when I look back, I mean, I could have followed the general pathway yeah. of probably going on the pathway of a lie and because for me i remember i asked my first manager in this job that please what did i tell you because when i started the job right <laughs> i mean obviously i should have known how to use sap for the first one month i was useless because i didn't really know anything mm -hmm. so i asked her well, what did i tell you that made you recruit me and she's like well during the interaction, she just felt that I was going to be good. So, mm -hmm. like, she just had, and for me, it's the Holy Spirit that magnified yes. whatever yeah. it is, yeah. I would have said. Yeah. But yeah. if I had gone the pathway of lying, I probably would have cut off that channel mm -hmm. from the Holy Spirit. Like, I would have gone in my mind, yeah. not in, mind. in the minds of the Holy Spirit. So I would have gone in my own mind, and then mm -hmm. it probably would have been a different case. So I think, really, like we said, is devotion to God. So as God leads you, do. That's that's yeah. what I think. As yeah. God leads you, do. just do. Yeah. yeah. So um does anybody have any benefits again? Because like what he said, um to consecrate ourselves, consecration comes with loneliness and sometimes it's not always sweet. Mm -mm. It's never sweet. And sometimes, like he said, you that I'm sure there are times there are other jobs you applied for that you didn't get. I mean, I stayed two months. Exactly. Without, without so job. sometimes it's not like it's the magic thing you understand that oh because I'm consecrating myself now mm. once I just apply now it will happen. Mm -hmm. You know that's dying. You know. <laughs> yeah, that's you know that's the pain you will go through. It comes with sacrifices and all of that. So consecration, we, you have to sacrifice a lot of things. You understand because God is actually testing. And you I need want to, to see consistently go back to God to yeah. like get reassurances. Like you go the first way, you stay in the part of consecration, and then it's like. I mean, you're not, it's not, it's like you are not being the, as they used to say, good boy, no, they pay. <laughs> so you are staying in that part and it's like, I mean, you're suffering the consequences of not mm. hearing words, of being stubborn, but from time, affliction. I know that it's always, I mean. It always pay. It always ends Because well. the light affliction, we, yeah. you know, yeah. we, we, we yeah. go through today, yeah. we walk out. Yeah. You know, yeah. And yeah. Eternal, eternal, eternal glory. glory. Yeah. All right. I mean, do we, uh, does anybody have the last, the, any pattern? The, the, the examples I was going to share again, sticking with the Bible and the story of Daniel, and we know that at the end. And so when we're saying in terms of the dying to self and dying daily before God, I'm sure there are times when there are fellow Hebrew people or friends, apart from the three, would I be mocking them and saying, see what you're missing out on. Uh -huh. yeah. And for, I mean, it was for three years, yeah. they were eating vegetables and mm -hmm. water essentially. Um, but we find that at the end of the three years, they were found 10 times better than their peers. Yeah. And then they got drafted into the king's work. And if you see, there's that sacrifice, yes, but there's the reward that comes with it. And with that reward, there's a fulfilling of purpose, okay? Because that consecration to God is sort of what prepared them for the purpose that Daniel and his friends were going to fulfill in the land of Babylon yeah. and also for the land of, uh, for the people of Israel <laughs> while they were then Babylon. So we see Daniel going through, lasting through five mm. kings yeah. of Babylon, yeah. like yeah. saying through all of them, and not, mm -hmm. and so it was all those things. You, you can say it was the seeds he sowed yeah. in his consecration that brought those. Um, and then that takes us exactly brought those results. That takes us back to what we we're saying initially that consecration is tied to the purpose that God wants to yeah. fulfill. Yeah. 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 So beyond all the things we give or beyond all the things we do or not do, and beyond the rewards that come, is God is doing something on the earth through us. Mm. Um, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Maybe if time will permit, um, I mean, there's a scripture I said I was going to read. When I heard the topic, others oh, may, I cannot, right? Yeah. And that's Philippians 4, 8. So that says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are noble, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good reports, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on this thing. So I, what I usually tell myself is, I mean, is, is to pass everything I want to do through the test of this scripture. Yeah. Is it honest? 
Is it noble? Mm. Is it praiseworthy? Mm. Is there virtue mm. that would come out of it? So yeah. if it passes, fine, then it's something I can do as a believer. But if it doesn't pass, I mean, it might not be generally seen as something that's wrong. But if it doesn't pass, then I know that, oh, okay, it's what other people can do, but I cannot do it. Any any last word? Yvette? Yeah, so I, I agree with that. And I think I should probably just read the scriptures. But I also uh, uh, want us to understand that the results of the consecration might not necessarily be things. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Might not necessarily be, oh, um, uh, because I want to fast this year so that by June, Yep. God can. Yep. The result of the consecration is ultimately God. Yep. Is you embodying God. Yeah. Is you being the replica of God on the earth and living like God. Is you, you know, Jesus said, greater works are we going to do. Um, you know, what Jesus was saying, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. And then we are representatives of the Father on earth. And so the, the result of you leaving all of that behind is having that connection, having that relationship with God where, you know, um, okay, so Wolfbeck just ended and um, one of the sessions that Apostle Selman took, he mentioned that um, it was about the other side of faith. Mm -hmm. And he said that um, sometimes the result of your faith action is not that that uh, thing happened, but that you grew in devotion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Capacity. So you'd give yeah. capacity. Yeah. So you were you wanted to pray out something and that cost you to pray for hours, mm-hmm. which you normally wouldn't do. You have increased your capacity. Yeah. So let me read um Romans 12. Um I, I put it from the amplified because he mentioned something about this. And he said, Beloved friends, what should be our proper response to God's marvelous mercies? I encourage you to surrender yourselves to God to be his sacred living sacrifices and live in holiness, experiencing all that delights his heart. For this becomes your genuine expression of worship. Um, you know, the Amplified, let me read the Amplified. It says, I appeal, I appeal to you therefore, brethren, I beg you in view of all the blessings of God to, be, to make a decisive dedication of your bodies, presenting all your members and faculties as a living sacrifice, holy, devoted, consecrated, and well-pleasing mm-hmm. to God, which is your reasonable, rational, intelligent service and spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world fashioned after or adapted to his external superficial customs will be transformed Mm. by the entire renewal of your mind so that's Mm. just like a summary so it's that personal devotion leaning into god and you know walking in his path yeah thank you yeah that's um that's amazing and before we we go today let's not um forget the the person of the holy spirit yes because without all of these things by strength you can do it. Can no man. Yeah. <laughs> no matter how much we want to separate, well, oh Lord, this is, I really want to grow so in you. I want to know you. Spirit. It's not by strength. It's not by mind. It's not by power. It still remains the God. by the spirit of God. So yeah. however depth we want to go, we must always involve the person of the spirit of God. Yeah. Holy Spirit, I trust you is our time, you know, our helper in, in times of, you know, mm-hmm. need and all of So it will always give us that strength, mm-hmm. you know, the grace, yeah. you know, to separate ourselves and dedicate ourselves. I mean, I, I believe we've had a beautiful <laughs> yes, conversation yeah, today. I so. And I really hope that for viewers watching and those listening, I hope you pick one or two from this discussion or our conversation today. And I hope you set yourself aside for God's use, for his service, whatever depth you want to go. Know that God, you can go through the spirit of God. Um, thank you guys. Thank you, thank you. for thank you. joining us on this conversation. <laughs> Until our time. next edition again, God bless you. See you around. And, um, See you around. Ciao. Bye. Bye. <laughs>